little bit first. What did you notice from the absence of LeBron, even though they did make some strides after the trade deadline? Well, it, it's it's just tough. You take you you look at the Warriors with with no you know Steph Curry. You look at the way this team has kind of been built. It's around LeBron James. And then you lose D'Angelo Russell. So now, you know, he's out with a sprained ankle. No LeBron James. Look, Anthony Davis, look, he, he put up great numbers. 28 and 19. You get 28 and 19 or whatever. For and he, there, he's taking some slander, yeah, which yeah. I feel like is a little no, unfair. No, that, not, not from his point of say, oh, well, in, he had five blocks. He had 28. He had 19. If you can get 24 points from Braun, it's a different game. If you can get 15 points from D'Angelo Russell, it's game so now I, I, you look at it in my opinion he did what he could do and now he's out with the right foot stretch yeah as you see right there on the bottom of that's, our screen ad out tonight don't give me his performance don't give me his performance that's the part that has been the biggest hindrance to anthony davis being a highly impactful player right if he's injured he's injured i'm not here to question that i like i, I feel bad for the guy but when you look at this roster can we depend on certain people can we get there you got to look at 28 19 okay look we're going to start building this around ad because braun's going to be out for a month we don't know when d'angelo russell's coming back so we're going to build this around and it's like oh no, we can't do that. So, I mean, we did get a little bit of good signs around the Lakers based on their supporting cast, but they're down their supporting cast. What do they do in the interim? Because today we also got the news that Steph Curry is returning soon. Do you think these are two teams that are trending in different directions? I think the Lakers still have a chance if LeBron James is able to come back soon. Again, you're referencing LeBron James. There <laughs> are AD. two other all-stars on this team that are currently in better health and shape than LeBron James. LeBron James is going to miss two weeks, three weeks a month, right? If it was the middle of the season and they were a, a quality team, let's say they were hovering around the, 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 the four spot, he would miss exponentially more time to make sure he was 100% healthy. Even the original statement said, based off of where they are, will dictate when he comes back. Yeah, look at the standings, though. Look how cluttered it all is. Let's talk the Grizzly side a little bit. Okay. Because I think they took a lot of heat based on Jaws' comment, and then we immediately saw their record in the West after that comment. But it seems like they've taken things personally, and it seems like they're a little bit better off performance-wise. Yeah, I, yeah I, I think Stephen Adams missing you know a bunch of time over that stretch was probably not great for them also. Uh, you know, I think the addition of Luke Kennard, I think, is going to, you know, um, could be a positive one for them when you look long term. Uh, I, I think the Grizzlies are one of those teams where great teams and top three teams in each conference, their whole mindset is we need to focus in on ourselves, not what other people are doing, not who's winning below us, not who's winning above us. We need to focus on ourselves. And I think there was a small stretch there for the Grizzlies where they were kind of like, we're not worried about anything, yeah. blah, blah. It's like, no, 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 no. You go look at any great team, any great players, they are always focused on themselves and getting better. Yeah, well, you mentioned great teams, great players, top three. If we switch from, you know, the West to the East, still to come on NBA Today, oh. we're all about Boston. I said this whole season, not me winning MVP, not guys being all-stars. It's can we get back to the finals and have a different result than we did last season. That's what it's about. Jason Tatum, he currently has the fifth shortest odds to win MVP. That's according to Caesar Sportsbook. He would be the first Celtic to win MVP since Larry Bird back in 1986. But Jason Tatum has some stiff competition for that MVP candidacy, and a lot of them were in action last night. Janae has more back in Los Angeles. Thanks, Malika. Plenty of those MVP candidates, they were in action last night, so why don't we just run through how they did? Let's run get through. to it. Let's start with Giannis Antetokounmpo, who recorded his NBA leading eighth game with 30 points and 15 rebounds this season to lead the Bucks to their 15th straight game and win, and completing a perfect February. That is so impressive. Richard, Giannis said post-game, he feels like some fans take him for granted. Do you take Giannis yeah, for granted? No, me? I don't take him for granted. I 100% appreciate everything this man. He's one of my favorite play players to watch. Cosign retweet. Now, moving to the preseason MVP, favorite Luka Doncic, who celebrated his 24th birthday last night. Luka had 39 points, but Tyrese Halliburton, whose birthday is actually on leap day, February 29th, he stole the show, 32 points of his own. Kyrie Kyrie missed a game-winning attempt late as time expired, and the Mavs dropped to one and four in games when both Kyrie and Doncic play. Uh-oh. Here is former Mavs and current Pacers coach Rick Carlisle on Luca's birthday. Did you get Luca a birthday gift? <laughs> I brought him Halliburton. 
Casual flex right there. Now to the betting favorite for MVP right now, Nikola Jokic, who posted his 100th career triple-double last night. Just the sixth player in NBA, NBA history to do so. In fact, Oscar Robertson is the only player to ever make the Century Club faster. That's wild. Now the Nuggets, they've won 28 straight games in which Jokic records a triple-double, including all 24 games this season. Jokic was asked about this amazing 100 milestone after the game. Nicola? What does 100 triple doubles mean to you? I mean, when you start batting, it's easy, you know, so. <laughs> you heard that, right? You heard the stat batting stuff out there. Yes, of course. I mean, it's What's true. What's your reaction to it? It's true. So, you know what we had to do? We have to bring Kendrick Perkins no, back into the mix. No, we don't. We absolutely do because today is Perks' defense day. <laughs> yes, and this is do. this is the what is it? The law company of uh, Perkins and Perkins. He's he's forward for a uh, yeah, defense, right? Whatever he's, you way. Perk, Perk, you. Well, well, whatever you want to call it. Perk, you've been huh? attached to this narrative, though, with Jokic over the last week, stat padding, all, all that type of stuff. But we all know that you're not afraid to call out a player. You're not afraid to poke the bear. It has worked with your previous Celtics takes. But what is your response to Nikola Jokic, his 100 triple double, and this notion of stat padding? Well, well first of all, congratulations to him. All right. Second of all, a hit dog will holler. And I'm not telling any lies. And Shanae and Richard, if you sit up there and disagree with me that these things don't take place in the locker room or, or on the floor at times when, when guys are reaching certain milestones or having a chance to hit double-doubles or triple-doubles, then y'all not being honest with yourselves. I've been part of locker rooms, and I was one of those guys as well. And it's okay. It's okay. There's no knock on Jokic and what he brings to the table. We're not saying that he's not one of the most skilled bigs to ever play the game of basketball. But I do recall when Russell Westbrook was averaging a triple-double for four years when he was doing it, it was a lot of, you know, hey, man, look at Steven Adams boxing out and Russ going to grab the rebounds. And it's okay. Like, it happens. Let's not act like it don't exist in the NBA world. Okay, Richard, what are your thoughts? I, I think Perk's entitled to his opinion, even if he's wrong. I, you know, I, I think the, oh, the, man, the, the, the no, will you hush your mouth? All right. Listen, the context behind what he's saying is different. Yes, Perk is correct. Everyone stat pads. You got, I played with Jason Kidd and I would just, he one of those triple doubles. If you go and look at the Nuggets and the way that they play, Jokic never gets a hockey assist. He never makes the pass that leads to the pass. When he throws that ball, he like, they, they shoot the ball. And look, but this is the difference and where I, I will give Jokic credit. They're 24-0 when he gets a triple-double. He should go try and get a triple-double, right? He should go try and get a triple-double, right? Because he's not hurting his team. They're undefeated. They're batting 1,000 when he gets a triple-double. Then we're going to add one more layer to this. The last time that the Nuggets weren't in first place in the West, and you see how tight it is in that middle, the last time they weren't first place was December 19th. So it's been, it's been like two months. So they have held the lead in, in first place in the Western Conference for two months, and every time he gets a triple-double, he wins. Yes, stat padding goes on. Is he trying to get triple-doubles? Yes, mainly because they win every damn time he does. <laughs> okay. So like, I don't understand what okay. you're talking about. And uh, RJ, I'm not saying that had nothing to do. We was when I made that comment, it was had everything to do with the MVP. Oh, okay, conversation, that's a different conversation. Right? Let's have so this we, up. Yeah, so that's that. That's what I'm trying to say. And look, I'm not knocking it again. I'm not saying nothing. It happens in the league, RJ. That's what I'm Agreed. telling you. Like you just said. But here, here's the thing. When are we going to hold him to the same standard that we do, Giannis and everybody else that did one? Multiple it's MVPs going to start after this season. year. It's going to start after this year, Perk, because no. we're going to have – while we can talk about one. the MVPs so really quickly. After went, after really after quickly, Perk. Yeah, yeah, Perk, this why, is what's why, going to happen. Why, why Let me predict now. for everybody what's going to happen. I love the Denver Ooh, Nuggets. I my, think that they're the very, I think they are very, very right good. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, that's fine. Make your point, Richard. My point that I'm trying to make, because we have a bit of a delay, is this. We're going to talk about the MVPs, but when we're talking about championships, there's not a lot of people that have Denver as a favorite coming out of the West. 
There's not a lot of people that have them as a favorite to win a championship, even right now. So we're he's probably going to get the MVP. Let's just say he's going to get the MVP, and then we can move on okay. to who's going to win a championship because that most likely will not include the Denver Nuggets. That's what I'm hearing. That's what people believe. But but still, Richard, how does that sound if he's going to win three MVPs straight and we don't hold him to the same standard that we didn't held everybody else from Giannis to Braun to KD, like to Steph, like all of these guys that won MVP next was on the list was that we was saying how much pressure it was behind them to go and win a championship. Yeah, I.